Have you been to the lake when it feels like the bass just aren't biting? If so, you may be missing a simple yet important element of bass behavior that determines if a bass will bite your bait. In this video, I'm going to explain two different ways the bass feed and how you can manipulate this behavior to catch bass in even the toughest conditions. Let's get into it. You may have heard the term strike zone thrown around when people talk about bass fishing, and it's made to sound like some magical zone you need to put your bait in to get fish to bite. But it's really not all that magical. You can actually manipulate a strike zone yourself if you understand the basics of how bass feed. In general, bass feed in two different ways. The first is feeding around hard edges. What is a hard edge? This is any area where bass or bait fish can't swim through. A few simple examples are the surface of the water, the bottom of the lake, or the edge of the bank. There is no way for bass or bait fish to swim through the bottom of the lake, or 10 to 20 feet above the surface of the water. Moreover, these areas extend for a long distance, so bass and bait fish can't just swim around them. A great example of this on a lake would be the edge of the bank with a big rock on it. In this scenario, a shad can't swim past the bank's edge without getting stuck on shore. It can't swim down because of the bottom of the lake, and it can't swim to the right because the big rock is blocking its path. The only means of escape is back out into the lake and to the left. This is a perfect ambush situation for a bass, because the shad has only one escape route. However, even if the rock wasn't there, the shad is still in a tough spot, and it's likely the bass can still ambush the shad where the bottom of the lake, the surface of the water, and the bank meet. You've probably caught plenty of bass in the same situation by fishing a topwater or moving bait very close to the bank. You'll often get a lot of your bites within one to three feet of the shoreline because this is the easiest place for bass to ambush bait fish. This is the strike zone for this situation. Now unfortunately, the bait fish aren't always right up against the bank. Instead, they may be out in the middle, sitting five feet down over 30 feet of water. In this situation, the only hard edge bass can ambush against is the surface of the water. This is why you often find schooling fish that are breaking the surface and busting on shad in open water. The surface of the water provides the only practical ambush point for the bass because the bait can swim freely in all directions in open water except up towards the surface. Therefore, the strike zone is the surface of the water in this situation. On the other hand, bait fish may be positioned closer to the bottom of the lake. This is similar to the situation we just discussed, but instead of the best hard edge being the surface, it's now the bottom of the lake. When bait fish are positioned within 2-5 to five feet of the bottom, it's much easier for bass to ambush them down against the bottom of the lake rather than chasing them all the way up to the surface. Therefore, the strike zone is the bottom of the lake in this situation. For a practical example of this, here are two different scenarios I captured while fishing for bass in open water with live scope. In this first example, the bait fish are close to the surface of the water, and the bass are positioned below the shad, pushing them towards the hard edge of the water surface. To get these fish to bite, I threw a core tackle hover rig with a bass tricks live tricks because I could keep it close to the surface and above the bass that were feeding up to the surface of the water. In this second example, the bait fish were deeper and close to the bottom of the lake. The bass were positioned above the bait fish, pushing them towards the hard edge of the bottom of the lake. To get these bass to bite, I threw a 3 8 ounce Tamiki rig and tried to get my bait just below the bass as they were pushing the shad down to the bottom. I would only get a bite when my bait was between the bass and the shad. In both of these scenarios, it would be very easy to miss the key strike zone for these fish. In the first example, I wouldn't get any bites if my bait was fished below the level of the fish because their strike zone was above them and close to the surface of the water. In the second example, the strike zone was actually below the bass, between the bass and the shad that they were pushing towards the bottom. To consistently catch fish, you need to understand where the strike zone is for those fish based on how they're feeding, and then pick the right bait that efficiently targets that strike zone, whether it's above the fish, below the fish, or sometimes at the same level as the fish. This isn't that hard as long as you keep in mind where the hard edges are on your lake, 
and where the bass will have the easiest time ambushing their prey. That's the first way bass feed, but it's not the only way. And you may be thinking of past fish catches that don't line up exactly with what I just explained. That's probably because those fish catches fall into the second category of bass feeding behavior, ambush feeding. To explain this feeding behavior, let's think about how a bass would feed around a boat dock. Put yourself in the mind of a bass. Where is your best chance of ambushing a shad or a bluegill that swam by the dock? First, you may try to hide behind a dock pole or float. It's similar to when you're hiding behind a couch when you want to jump out and scare someone. You want to be behind the couch so you're out of the line of sight of the person you're trying to scare, but you want to be close enough to the path they're walking in so you can quickly reach out and grab them to give them a little scare. This is similar to a bass hiding behind the post of a boat dock to ambush bait fish. In addition to hiding around the physical structure of the boat dock, you may be able to conceal your presence in the shadows around the boat dock. This is similar to hiding in the shadows of a dark room when you're trying to jump out and scare someone. You don't necessarily need to have an object to hide behind as long as those shadows are dark enough to conceal your presence. The same concept applies when you're thinking about bass around a boat dock. In a lot of cases, you'll have floating boat docks that will cast shadows towards the bottom of the lake, even if that dock is over 15 to 25 feet of water. Bass can sit in these shadows to conceal their presence and ambush bait fish that are swimming outside of these shadows in the better lit areas around the boat dock. By putting yourself in the position of the bass and thinking about how you would ambush bait fish around a boat dock, it's easy to see why you get the majority of your bites around the poles of a boat dock or the shadow or shade pockets on the side and underneath the dock. The same concept applies to almost any object or shaded area on your lake. Moreover, in most cases, objects will provide bass with a place to hide behind and a shadow to conceal themselves in. So you need to fish both ambush areas or strike zones to give yourself the best chance to catch a fish. Now there are scenarios where there'll be no object in the water, but there are still shadows that the bass can use to ambush their prey. This can happen around overhanging trees, tall bluff walls, and bridges. Even though bass don't have an object to hide behind, they can hide in the shadows cast on the surface of the water to conceal their presence in ambush bait fish. Another potential ambush scenario is created on the edge of a grass or weed line. Bass will sit in the edge of the grass to hide their presence and ambush bait fish that swim in the open water areas next to the hard grass line. These grass lines are different from the hard edges we talked about earlier because the bait fish and fish can easily swim in and out of the grass. However, even though it's not a hard edge that the bass can ambush bait fish against, they can still use the edge to conceal their presence and target those bait fish that are caught out in open water. There are a lot more examples of potential ambush zones we could talk about, like the edge of a mud line, current seams, or the lip of a steep drop off or ledge. All of these ambush areas have different qualities, but the reason that bass use them are the same. Bass just want to set up in an obscured or hidden area they can quickly jump out of to ambush prey. With this concept in mind, we can now better understand how we should present our bait to bass that are set up in an ambush mode. In the dock example, we would want to either target the posts of the boat dock or the edge of shaded areas where the dark shade meets the well-lit areas. When fishing shade pockets created by overhanging trees, we want to present our bait on the edge of the shade pocket where the light and dark areas meet. Finally, on grass lines, we want to present our bait down the edge of the grass, right where the grass stops and the open area begins. In all of these examples, the strike zone is relatively small and well-defined, and if we can keep our bait in that strike zone for the majority of our fishing day, we greatly increase our odds of catching a fish. By understanding the two ways the bass feed, you can keep your bait in the strike zone for the majority of the time you're on the water. The most important thing to remember is that bass are just wanting to ambush foods so they can fill their stomachs. So just put yourself in the position of the bass and figure out where you would have the easiest time ambushing a shad, whether it's around a boat dock, a lay down, or up against a bank. 
With this information in mind, you're going to have a lot more success on the water. Leave a comment down below if you enjoyed this video and let me know what your favorite tip was from this specific video. Thanks for checking it out. We'll see you all next one.